Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with the third episode in our Pokemon Heart Gold Random Card Challenge. For a rundown on the setup and rules, you can check out the first two episodes, they'll be linked in the description. Last time out, we took down Whitney Swampert and Morty's Groudon to earn our third and fourth Johto Gym badges, and with our rival too scared to face us again, we've got a free run at the next few gyms. After visiting Jasmine and the sick Ampharos in the lighthouse in Olivine, we head across the water to Seanwood and retrieve the secret potion. We'll return that to Jasmine in a bit, but there's a gym nearby and we may as well try to get our fifth gym badge while we're here. We're going to need a team of two to take on Chuck, so we only need to draw a couple of cards. It looks like we're going to be using Magmar and Execute for this one. It's actually a pretty good pairing as far as weaknesses go. Execute covers all three of Magmar's weaknesses and the fire type can easily take down quite a few of the grass and psychic types main foes. Okay, let's have a look at the team. First up we've got Cart and the Execute who's at level 31 with the moves Bullet Seed, Leech Seed, Sleep Powder and Confusion. Bullet Seed isn't a great move but we needed some sort of grass attack to deal with any ground, rock and water types that Magmar has to avoid. Speaking of, Boober the Magmar is at level 29 with Faint Attack, Fire Blast, Confuse Ray, and Fire Punch. That moveset at least covers Execute's Bug, Ice, and Ghost weaknesses. Bug is especially important because that's a quad weakness. Only one of Chuck's duo is over level 30, so there's only one guaranteed fully evolved Pokemon in this one. Let's give it a go. We send out Execute first, and the Seanwood Gym Leader starts off with Furret. Four hits of Bullet Seed hardly register with the normal type, so we change up our strategy and go with Leech Seed instead. Fart attacks with Fury Swipes before Carton puts him to sleep with Sleep Powder, and then we switch out to Magmar. One Fire Punch cracks the sleeping Longbody Pokemon, cutting away the rest of his health and taking Chuck down to one. The Seanwood Gym Leader's ace is Swalot, who comes out next. Boober starts off with Confuse Ray, but that doesn't hinder Swalot much. The Poison type crushes Magmar with Body Slam, but luckily it doesn't cause paralysis. A Fire Blast takes Swalop below half health, but a Citrus Berry recovers a large percentage of the lost HP. A Crit Fire Punch then leaves Swalop in red health, but after Breakthrough Confusion he's healed right back up by a Hyper Potion. A second Fire Punch chips away a bit of HP before Magmar goes for Confuse Ray because I forgot Swalop was confused because somehow he'd avoided hitting himself for like 19 consecutive turns. Of course, by using Confuse Ray on him, Swalop snapped out of Confusion and followed up by Poisoning Boober with Toxic. A successful Confuse Ray follows, with Swalot dealing damage to himself immediately, and then Magmar lands another critical hit on Fire Punch to secure the win. This is the last battle of the game where our opponent's team isn't guaranteed to be fully evolved, so our challenge really starts now. When we get back to Olivine and give Jasmine the secret potion to heal Ampharos, she agrees to return to her gym. We've got to draw three cards for our face-off with the Olivine Gym Leader, and we're gonna need a good team. For our sixth gym battle, we're gonna be using the team of Tangela, Vaporeon, and Tentacruel. So, for our first matchup with a full team level 30 or higher, we're going to have a fully evolved team of our own. This is a good draw and as long as we can avoid electric types, I think we're in good shape. Let's check out the team. Starting with Rio the Vaporeon, who's at level 30 with Surf, Sand Attack, Quick Attack and Blizzard. That's decent cover in case we come up against any dragons who resist all of our stab moves. Sneakers the Tangela is also at level 30 with Mega Drain, Ingrain, Sleep Powder and Growth. Last up, we've got Jalosi the Tentacruel at level 35, with Acid, Toxic Spike, Surf, and Barrier. Okay, let's get into it. Jasmine leads off with Camerupt, and we send out Vaporeon. For what feels like the first time in the series, we've got an ideal starting scenario. The Fire Ground type is quad weak to water, and the Surf that Rio sends her way is more than enough to score a knockout. With Jasmine down by one, she sends out Cloyster next, and after a series of sand attacks, we switch out Vaporeon for Tangela. After a Sleep Powder and an Ingrain, Sneakers raises his special attack with Growth. When he finally attacks with Mega Drain, it leaves Cloyster with only a few hit points remaining. The Citrus Berry she's holding recovers a bit of HP, but the Aurora Beam that she fires off when she wakes up goes wide of Tangela and a second Mega Drain finishes the job. Zatu's up last, and unfortunately, thanks to Ingrain, Tangela can't be switched out. I spent ages trying to get Zatu to attack Tangela so I could switch out, but Jasmine just kept calling for me first. Eventually, Sneakers took down Zatu with Mega Drain, so unfortunately we didn't get a chance to send in Tentacruel at all. That was a surprisingly easy start to life against the Fully Evolved. Let's see if Johto's 7th Gym Leader can do any better. Our next major battle will be against Price in the Mahogany Town Gym, but before we get there we've got some business to take care of at the Lake of Rage. There's a Red Gyarados marauding there and we need to either knock it out or catch it. 
Once we're done there, it's time to draw a team of three to take on the Mahogany Gym Leader. We're going to be using the trio of Mewtwo, Dragonair and Kadabra, which is a terrifyingly good team. As soon as I drew Mewtwo, I was hoping for something like Magikarp and Weedle. I can't see many Pokemon standing up to Mewtwo, so our remaining duo doesn't really matter. Let's check out the team. Siler the Mewtwo's at level 30 with Confusion, Blizzard, Fire Blast and Thunder, which gives us a ton of options against whatever price throws at us. Aura the Dragonair is up next at level 32 with the moves Surf, Thunder Wave, Twister and Dragon Rage. Our final team member is Job the Kadabra, who's got the moves Psybeam, Recover, Reflect and Miracle Eye. Unless Price has assembled a team of the finest dark types available, I think we're good to go. Let's get into the battle. The Mahogany Town Gym Leader sends out Wolrain first, and Siler just obliterates him with Thunder. Price then sends out his Gliscor, and a Blizzard just blows him away. Last up is Agron. Whenever it's possible, we want to use our whole team, so we switch out to Kadabra. A single Iron Head destroys the Psychic type, which isn't ideal, but there's basically no way we're going to lose this. Aura is up last for the team, and Surf is almost sufficient to hand us the win. Agron survives in red health, but after an Iron Head, Price uses a Hyper Potion to heal him right back up. That doesn't end up mattering though, as a critical hit on Surf wipes out Price and gives us the Glacier Badge. With 7 spots now filled up in our case, there is only one empty spot left. Before heading to Blackthorn to go after our final badge though, we've got to take care of Team Rocket in Goldenrod City. Seeing as we made quick work of Chuck, Jasmine and Price, I think we can throw in the first big Rocket face-off back in Johto's largest city. This one has me a little worried. Petrol has a full team of six and they're all going to be fully evolved. For the first full team matchup of the series, we're going to be using Persian, Jinx, Raticate, Wartortle, Machoke and Rattata. That's a pretty decent group and just about all of our weaknesses can be covered by another team member, but with three normal types we don't have much variety as far as stab moves go. Okay, let's have a look at the team. Pringles the Jinx is up first, and at level 30 she's got Blizzard, Mean Look, Fake Tears, and Hyper Beam. Without a Psychic type move on hand, we're in real trouble if Petrol has a single Fighting type. Our second team member is Zuki the Persian, who's equipped with Fake Out, Screech, Hyper Beam, and Faint Attack. Iris the Rattata's up next, and she's got Hyper Fang, Assurance, Crunch, and Sucker Punch. Taki the Radicate's our fourth Pokemon, and his moveset's made up of Hyper Fang, Hyper Beam, Scary Face, and Crunch. Kimura the Machoke's our penultimate team member, and he's got Seismic Toss, Foresight, Revenge, and Dig. Finally, we've got Crush the Wartortle, who's got the moves Bite, Rapid Spin, Protect, and Surf. Okay, I'm seriously lacking confidence here, but let's give it a try. Petra leads off with Salamence, so once again we've struck gold with our first team member out. Jinx outspeeds the dragon to land a blizzard and knock him out in one. That was the perfect start. Hariyama's up next though, so there's the worst case scenario. With an ice type and three normal types, this is real trouble. We switch in Rattata, which is honestly just a stalling tactic. A couple of hits take care of Iris, but Hyperfang does at least deal a little bit of damage. The safest switch in is Wartortle, so that's who we bring in next. Hariyama lives through a surf, but the evolved water starter takes a hit well and finishes off the fighting type with a second wave. Petrol doesn't draw the line at pseudo-legendaries though, he's really hoarding the good stuff from Giovanni, sending in Zapdos third. Surprisingly enough, the second of the legendary birds actually allows Crush to get off a surf before knocking him out with Pluck. We send Jinx back in, but she can't connect with Blizzard and Zapdos ends up paralyzing her with Thunder Wave. The paralysis prevents Pringles from attacking, and the avian representation of Thunder almost cuts her down, but with 9 hit points remaining, she connects with Blizzard, and out of nowhere, a critical hit scores Jinx another knockout. The paralysis ends up being too much though. When Ursaring comes in, she's helpless to stop him. Luckily, we do have Machoke, who's a pretty ideal matchup for the normal type. Revenge and Seismic Toss cut down the bear, whose only defense is a single sweet set. We have a narrow lead in the battle somehow, but Glade's up next and we don't have a great matchup here. I do know that it doesn't have great defense though, so switching out to Persian and getting down to Screech seems like the best plan. While lowering Glade's defense, he worked on raising his attack and managed to take down Zuki. If Raticate doesn't outspeed Glade, this plan is going to look incredibly stupid. Fortunately, Taki does succeed in attacking first, and a single crunch cuts down Glade, leaving Petrol with only one. Golduck's up last for the Team Rocket Executive, and at level 32, I've apparently made a mistake. 
I remembered Petrol's team being made up of 6 level 30s, but what would usually be his wheezing is actually at level 32. So Iris the Rattata should have been at level 32, though I'm not sure that would have made the world of difference. Anyway, a series of Hyperfangs chip away Golduck's HP until there's nothing left. Some way, somehow, this ragtag bunch of misfits has defeated a team made up of the best Team Rocket has to offer. At least I hope that's their best, because we're not quite done with them yet. The rest will have to be dealt with next time though. We earned three more gym badges and took down one of Team Rocket's best in this episode, and that seems like good progress. I'm gonna call it there for now, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.